Um, you know, and one of the things that we wanted to talk about is something pretty exciting that happened for the Morgan Streetman Show yesterday. Pat George, you don't know about this yet. No, what is it? Okay, well, guess what? We made the Gateway Pundit. The Gateway Pundit, yep. if, you're, if you're not familiar with the Gateway Pundit, you got to put that on your daily reading list, thegatewaypundit.com. It's one of the best sites on the Internet, you know, in your been, host's humble opinion. They've been accurate about so many things, like, you know, they say something's going to happen, and it's happened. And they're some of the only folks on online who are covering so many of the stories that we read about. So many things up, particularly with respect to the election, election integrity. They've been re- really spot on on that throughout the entire process. If you want to go find the article there, they, they actually reported on the show the segment that we did where we talked about uh, some of the folks involved in the Capitol riots who actually went into the Capitol building and we covered some of the issues uh, that they were dressed up as Trump, Trump supporters, and a lot of these folks were Antifa. They had the meetup point at the Washington Monument ahead of time, and then they all proceeded over to the Capitol as agitators. We also talked about some folks who reported from live from that scene who talked about some of the different military-type groups and different groups of people who were involved in the uh, intrusion into the Capitol. Now, you know, it's hard to find the right words for this because, of course, the media continues to pump our minds full of certain words. It's it's an insurrection or, you know, invasion. I think we've even used the word invasion. And there's nothing improper about the word invasion. But, you know, it probably connotates a certain uh, strength of the, you know, proceedings that is more, I think, than what actually occurred there, because certainly— The folks who went in didn't do any, you know, they weren't trying to destroy property in a large scale. In other words, they didn't go in and try to burn the building down like we see with the Antifa folks whenever they attacked places. Now, they did break windows. It looks like things were stolen. Uh, Maybe the computer out of Nancy Pelosi's office, we heard that was stolen. And then someone tried to shop that around, supposedly. We saw the lectern being taken, and that was the gentleman from down in Parrish, Florida, who's since been arrested and charged federally, Uh, but apparently he didn't even take the lectern out, so he was just carrying the lectern around, and then maybe his better judgment got a hold of him, and he decided, hey, maybe I shouldn't try to take this lectern home with me. Um, But anyway, so there was the event there. We said from the beginning, gosh, it sure seems like this doesn't seem like the conduct of your typical Trump supporters, who tend to be law-abiding citizens, who tend to be Uh, favorable towards law enforcement, not getting into fistfights and fisticuffs with law enforcement. And that's what people who were there on the ground reported, that these folks at the Stop the Steal rally, you know, were were very law-abiding, were picking up trash off the ground. There was a limited amount of facilities made available for them, but yet they didn't trash the place. You know, just to sum it up, what happened there there were a limited amount of trash cans. There were a limited amount of portalettes, but yet people weren't misbehaving. They weren't, you know, urinating in the bushes. They weren't leaving trash everywhere. The types of things that you see when Antifa takes over, say, for instance, a few blocks of a city like Seattle or Portland, and they leave absolute destruction in their ways. So Trump supporters have always been different historically. So therefore, it's hard to believe that all of a sudden they would turn into Antifa. Now, we've been clear on the show, and I think that's it's worth repeating that there had to have been some Trump supporters in the crowd that went into the Capitol. Maybe there were even some people who were part of, you know, the instigation of it that were Trump supporters. I don't think we can we can, you know, can't leave any of that out as a possibility. And almost nothing in life is completely absolute. So, you know, it's not all one group of people. Usually there are crossovers. There are people who come in from other groups. But certainly the instigation of a large part of what happened that day at the Capitol, we think, bears the hallmarks of the activities of groups like Antifa, uh, like the BLM movement. And you might say, what are those? Why do you think that? Well, just look at what happened in this country last summer. All across the country, the riots, the looting, the burning, all of that occurred. It was led by, it was instigated by those groups. And in fact, that was what was so offensive to so many people. That's a large part of where President Trump's support came from, too, 
You know, and that's why they stopped doing it. If you notice, all of a sudden they just stopped. First, the Democrats were saying that they supported that kind of behavior, that those people needed to act out in order to affect some kind of change. So if you don't like a policy, the answer is not to go and vote for somebody else. The answer is to go and burn down your own city, riot, loot. There were even murders that occurred. We saw specific murders. There was that guy... And I can't remember if it was in Portland or Seattle, but he he actually went and shot that Trump supporter. And then he later was shot himself by federal marshals. You know, he he essentially started shooting at them. I think there were 50 something of them coming for him. And so anyway, he wound up dead. But that is not the way to affect change. And that is so offensive to so many people, law and order people, law abiding citizens in this country. And so you just have to look at what who is the conduct reminiscent of and then you have to wonder were those people involved that's what we told you from the beginning last week we brought you some evidence of it shared some of the things that we've been able to find online some great reporting done by other people including the gateway pundit you got to check out the gateway pundit we're thankful to them for featuring the morgan streetman show on their web page yesterday it's a great honor to be associated with them love reading their work And, uh, you know, so go out there and check it out. If you want to find the story, you just go to thegatewaypundit.com, go into the search box, and if you just type Morgan Streetman, you'll find the story. It was posted at about 2 p.m. yesterday afternoon, and it, it the headline of it involves Michael Yan, that journalist that we told you about, who was in Hong Kong and was also at the Capitol and who talked about some of the similarities there. We'll be right back after the break. Thank you for listening to The Morgan Streetman Show. We hope you enjoyed what you heard, and if you did, please click like and subscribe to help us out. And remember that we recommend that you exercise your brain at least once a week.